Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a tips and tricks video based on the things that I learned while building a hardline liquid cooled system that I think are worth knowing. These are things that I picked up along the way that I didn't find information on elsewhere and will hopefully be useful. Nuggets and things that I'm going to share with you that will make life a little bit easier if you're thinking about building one of these systems. And this is built using Corsair's Hydro X system. And I did a full video on this that I'll link to in the description. And it's just for CPU cooling. But the convenience of this kit is that it includes everything that you need to build with the exception of a heat gun. You get all the fans, radiator, the pump reservoir combo, the CPU block, six hard tubes, cutting tool, and various other things. So this system makes it really simple in that you have everything that you need, but there are still some things along the way that I found out the hard way that I think it's worth knowing. So one of the things that's quite intimidating about doing a liquid cooled setup is knowing which parts to buy and making sure you have the right kit for your case and for your setup. And the Hydro X series makes it a little bit easier because you can get everything you need and you can also go through this configuration tool on Corsair's website so you can see, and I'll leave a link to this in the description, that you can click through and design your loop and you can select from a number of different cases and it's not just limited to Corsairs, you'll see for example there's a Lee and Lee case down here and you can set it up there, but obviously we're going to use the 5000T in this instance, so just show you the process for doing that. You can put in your motherboard as well, and I'm using the ROG Maximus here in motherboard, you can see here, so we can select that, and you can put in your CPU too, so 11900K in this instance. And you can go through and select your graphics card if you're interested in doing that. Well, we're not going to do graphics card cooling in this instance, but you can go through and find your graphics card and get what's necessary. And if you're liquid cooling M2 storage, you can do that here. And then we can select what sort of setup you want. You'll notice that you have the option for two or three radiators, for example. We really only need one for the CPU cooling, so we're just gonna do that. You can go through the various steps here and choose from all the different things. You can choose a different block. You can choose different setup in terms of what you're adding in. You can choose, for example, having two radiators, as I said already. You can choose what fans you're gonna include in the system. So you might want to go for QL120s, for example. And then your pump style. So you can see, obviously, we've got this style of pump in the kit that I'm about to show you, but you could go for a different one. And you add all this together and you're basically configuring your system and getting it ready to go and making life a little easier in terms of what you're doing. But obviously, we've already got the full kit, so now I'm going to talk about the various aspects of that. And I'm going to start with what is most the intimidating thing of the whole process, is obviously the hard pipes because you need to bend and cut them to get them into the right shape and size to fit into the various points. Now I used a heat gun on mine and you can get various different sorts of heat guns but you need to have it quite hot and what I found is actually I used it too hot quite a bit and used it in the same place for too long quite regularly so my tip here is to basically move the pipe around really quickly and over a wider space than you actually need to bend and also avoid using the hottest setting on your heat gun because what you will find is that you can have problems with the pipe i found that i had problems where it was both too hot and too cold it wasn't hot enough on the sides of the bend area where i needed to bend it or it was too hot in those points and it's a real trial and error place just be ready that you might need to use some of the defective pipe as sort of a test bench and an area where you can just test out new bends and trial and error and actually i ended up using some of the bits of pipe as sort of placeholders for an idea of what sort of size I needed to go between the different areas. But the biggest problem I struck across was issues with weird kinks and also spots where the pipe had bubbled up. And this is because it got too hot and was focusing the heat on an area for too long in order to bend it. So make sure you move the pipe around and warm the areas on either side of the area you're trying to bend as well as the point that you're trying to bend. But here you can see that I ruined a bit of pipe. The inside of it got a bit too smushed. I tried to bend it in too much of a different direction and it caused an issue. But now I can use that pipe 
to work out the length because one of the biggest other problems you'll have is you can't really mark the pipe with anything to indicate where you want to bend it so you wouldn't use a marker on there because when you heat it up that ink will then go into the pipe itself and obviously because these are clear pipes that's then going to show up in the system and it won't look great once the liquid's in there and it's fully installed so I'm using one that I've already bent because I know this is roughly the right size and it's sort of the shape that I want to go to so I can use that as a way to sort of gauge where I need to do my new bends on the new pipe and hopefully get it right this time. So the important tip here is to basically keep your gun on this coolest setting, heat it for less time than you think, so make sure you just heat it a little bit, test and see whether it's bendable or not, and heat a little bit more. Avoid keeping the heat on an area for too long, etc. Also, you can possibly mark the silicone hose that you put on the inside to protect the pipe when you're heating it. I found that this insert picked up a few bits of hair and other things, but you could also theoretically mark on there with a marker on the inside that then wouldn't come on the inside of the pipe. And because you can move it around inside the pipe, you can then adjust where the position is going to be that you're going to heat and bend it. And that makes life a little bit simpler. My next tip for piping is to essentially make sure that you've got enough length in here because you need 6mm to go into the various different brackets that you attach to the parts on the PC, so the reservoir or the CPU block for example. So you need a bit of extra length in there, more than you might think, in order to make sure there's a good seal. So make sure you cut that down, but be careful when you cut it because you don't want to end up cutting it too short that it then won't seal. So you need 6mm of extra length on the end there, so it's worth bearing that in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is the configuration of where you set things up. So because this reservoir has the option to mount it in various different places, you can obviously bear that in mind when you're going through the process. You have the option, for example, to mount it to the case directly. You can choose to mount it on fans. You can choose to mount it on different positions on the fans. So for example, you might mount it on the bottom fan, you might mount it in the middle fan. Some people even choose to mount theirs on the back on that single exhaust fan at the rear. You have various different options in there and all of those are worth thinking about before you get started. You see, I was thinking about mounting mine to the front fans, but then I realized you also have the option of mounting the radiator to the back of the case, mounting the fan on top of that, and then the pump on top of there. You could also mount it directly to the radiator without a fan on it as well, so there are another options there, plenty of different things to think about. The other thing that makes this pump reservoir combo interesting is that you'll see that there are various ports on it. So you have a number of different ports on there. One is the outlet port and the others are the intake ports for the various pipe works that you're going to be installing in there. So that's where the liquid's going to flow through into your system and then back around. So you're basically creating a loop, hence the custom loop. And this gives you various different mounting options in terms of where you're going to position it. Because not only do you need to work out where you're going to put it in your case, but also where those ports are going to point, and therefore where the pipes are going to into, and then you work it out based on that. With this particular pump reservoir combo, on the left hand side is your outlet port, so that's the first one you're going to come out of, and then head through to the rest of your system. The others are all intake ports, so that's where the pipes can go into potentially. Not only on the front, but also there's one on the top as well, that's worth bearing in mind. So you have options in terms of that, but it's also important to remember this because you need to cap off all those different ports when you're going through that aren't being used because you don't want to get to the end of the build process, fill that thing up and then find liquid pouring out of one of the ports you forgot to cover over. Especially if you're using this in this sort of position where you're going to be mounting a bracket to the back of it, it'd be really difficult to access this port at the end. So you really need to plan out your system build and where you're going to put things before you get started. My other tip is to be prepared for things to change. So my original plan was to go into the top of the pump reservoir combo from one of the ports. So take an intake into the top rather than from the front. Because I thought that would be easier based on the position of the radiator and where it was. Because it would mean I'd used a shorter pipe in order to access that. So I put the various different connectors in place ready for that. But when I went about the planning process, I realized that actually sort of reaching from the top of the radiator into the top of the reservoir was gonna be difficult because it's a bit of a weird angle. So you can account for this with the bends in your pipe, but because of the weird angles, it can make things a little bit tricky, but you do get some 90 degree angle adapters in the box with this kit that I'm using. And you can also purchase extra ones, so that's worth bearing in mind. So you can point your pipes in a little bit more of a different direction and then change your plans, and that can be worthwhile. 
Another important thing to keep in mind is the future plans for your system. So at some point you will need to drain your system down and take all the liquid out of it. And that's not necessarily something you're thinking about when you're going through the initial steps of it. But it is very important because you will need to replace the liquid in 12 months time if you're using clear coolant and even sooner if you're using coloured. So it's really important to think about this because you need, for example, a drain valve, so a spare port on your reservoir that you can easily access to be able to drain the system down. And you can get special valves for this that you can attach to the system, but they don't necessarily come included as standard. Alternatively, you can use an adapter and some spare pipe to put on one of the ports and then tip your system in the right direction. But you do need to bear that in mind when you're planning it out that at some point you'll need to be able to access it easily without leaking into your system. Leaks obviously are an important part of this stage as well because when you've filled it up you want to be able to run that system and not cause any problems. Put some paper towels in the bottom and use the adapter to run the pump on its own without running your entire system. I recommend removing the graphics card to make sure you don't get any leaks on that. But these paper towels will immediately let you know if there's any small drips that aren't necessarily immediately obvious. Obviously if coolant's pouring out of the system at quite a rate then it will be obvious but otherwise you might not notice tiny little drips. So run the pump for a few hours, some recommend overnight I'd suggest doing it for a few hours, but you can see me putting the liquid through the initial system here. Another important point of note is to run the pump and be careful not to run it dry. So make sure when you first turn it on that you let it run to hell and drain the liquid out, but not get all the way to the bottom. If it runs dry, it could potentially damage the pump. So you need to make sure there's always liquid in there because that's how the system is lubricated. And so that will go through there. You can see me stopping it here and it does drain very quickly on the first one. Next thing you'll notice is a lot of bowls in the system, not just in the reservoir, but in the pipe work as well. You'll find them in various different points. And so once you're sure that it's not leaking immediately, you can run the system and make sure everything's capped off, by the way, before you do this on the reservoir. But then you can tip and bend and tilt your PC into various different positions. And that will help the air bubbles move around and eventually come out and get into the reservoir and obviously raise to the top of the pump reservoir combo. Coming out the system, making it look a lot nicer. Here we can also initially test to make sure there's no leaks around the pipes and you should obviously feel there's no moisture there and that is a bonus. One of the things that you will notice is there is a lot of micro bubbles on the pump reservoir combo. You'll see them sort of stuck to the inside. Don't worry though because these will dissipate over time. I found that mine disappeared over a few days and eventually it became clear but initially it'll look kind of murky because of all those little bubbles inside. But as long as there's no excessive bubbles in the CPU block or in the pipe work and other things and then it should be fine so hopefully you found all these tips useful there are quite a few things to bear in mind the most important of which is obviously making sure everything's tight and not leaking before you run your system so make sure you run it for quite a while before you plug everything back in and also just to keep in mind the future plans of what you're going to do you see for example i don't have a drain valve on here so emptying this down is going to be a nightmare at some point but it is something that you should bear in mind one quick point of note is, did you know that with Corsair's various IQ RGB systems that you can sync it with games? So you can see us playing Tiny Tina's Wonderland here, and it's syncing the RGB lighting from the fans and the lighting panels and the Hydra X system with what's happening in the game to give you this more immersive look and feel. Makes it pretty interesting and another highlight to this setup. This has been the Provoke Prawn. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Be sure to check out the description for more information and links to other relevant videos. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. I hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.